Chapter 6 Pleased if I've been of help. Pilk shook his head and laughed as he left Ford far behind and continued his journey back to the lagoon. I have no idea what just happened, he said. Maybe there is something to be said for simple kindness after all. But I must say, this is turning out to be one of the weirdest days ever. Whatever next? He was slowly realising that he seemed to have a knack at talking himself out of tricky situations. But he still had to deliver the goods. The fruit, of course. This is getting to be something of a shopping list, Pilt muttered. Whatever that is. I think I'd better make a note of everything that I need to remember. So, he found a convenient tree stump, sat on it, opened his bag, and pulled out a large leaf and a small leather pouch which held some red-coloured powder. He used the red powder to make paint and create pictures and symbols on cave walls, the way that Nina, the tribe's elder, had showed him how to do. He felt as if he had been quite a good student of Nina's and wasn't too bad an artist either, even if he did say so himself. Pilk licked his thumb and dabbed it in the red powder. Right, let's see now. I need to make a mark for the fruit that I won down at the lagoon. And he made a single red mark on the leaf with his thumb. And then, of course, I have to get two for a fruit as well, because two for wants one too. And Pilk put a second red thumbprint beside the first one. And I'd better not forget Evie, or I'll end up as target practice for a catapult. A shiver ran down his back while he put another red mark by the first two. And Ford as well. Forest fighter Ford, he said in a voice, imitating Ford's, and he put one last mark beside the others. He looked at the four marks, and he felt quite pleased with his efforts. What are you doing, Pilk? said a quiet voice a little way up the path. It wasn't a gruff voice like Toofer's, or screechy like Evie's, or bellowing like Ford's. It was soft and friendly and pleasant. It was Fiena's voice, and Pilk had to admit that he was quite pleased to see her. Ah, uh, hi, Fiena, he said in a slightly surprised voice. Goodness, you won't believe the day that I've had. I've had to escape angry apes and avoid getting bashed, catapulted and thumped. Oh dear, Fiona chuckled. You have had a busy day, haven't you? What were you doing with that leaf? Oh, groaned Pilk. I'm trying to put some things down that I need to remember. My life won't be worth living otherwise. I've been told that a few times today. Fiona came over and sat down beside Pilk to get a better view of what he was trying to do. What are those marks for? she asked Pilk. What, these? he said. They're just fruit. They don't look much like fruit. They just look like thumbprints to me. Well, they are thumbprints, really, Pilk replied. But they're meant to be fruit. Why have you got to remember fruit? she asked. I suppose I should have mentioned that. I've got to take fruit back to Tufa. And Evie. Oh, and a guy called Ford, Pilk told her. Why have you got to take back fruit? She said. Well, I managed to talk myself out of trouble, so far at least, but only if I take fruit back, in exchange for not having my body parts rearranged. Oh, so it's bribery then? Fiona laughed. Pilk laughed back. Yes, I suppose it is, really. Well, between you and me, I don't think it's all that bad, she said. It shows you're being smart, surviving another day. Pilk found that somehow comforting and wondered if he was blushing. They are quite pretty though, aren't they? Fiona said. What are? Pilk said, not sure what Fiona meant. The marks that you've made, she said, pointing at the leaf. There, look. Pilk looked at the leaf but all he could see was his thumbprints dotted around. They're just a bunch of thumbprints, aren't they? He said, shrugging. Give it here, she said. I'll show you. 
She picked up a small twig and took the leaf from Pilk and dipped the twig into the red powder. Then she drew a line between two of the thumbprints and showed it to Pilk. There, what does that look like? she asked him. Uh, thumbprints and a line, he ventured. No, use your imagination, she said. I know it's only the Stone Age, but I'm sure you've got one. Think, what does it look like? The line with two marks at each end. He looked a bit harder and squinted his eyes and tried to work out what she was trying to tell him. After a few long moments, he finally said, A bone? Yes, she cried in relief. That's a pretty good description. The point is, it's a symbol. You know, like the ones that Nina shows us. It's not a picture of the thing itself. It's a symbol. A symbol for what? Pilk said, still not really getting her point. Well, for whatever it is you're trying to remember, Fianna said. What, you mean like the fruit? Pilk replied, slowly coming around to what she was getting at. Yes, of course the fruit, she said, appearing slightly exasperated. What is it with boys? You have to spell everything out for them. Pilk was honestly doing his best to understand what Fianna was trying to explain, and he felt like he was just on the edge of grasping it. What were you saying just before you knew that I was here? She asked him. He scrunched up his face and he tried to remember. Um, that I needed to make a shopping list, whatever that is, he said. No, after that, she said. You were going through a list, I think. Why you were putting marks down on the leaf. Oh, that, he said. I was trying to think of an easy way to remember what fruits I needed to get. And I started by putting a mark down for my fruit. The fruit that I beat the angry ape to. Yes, that was it. But you called it something, she said. Was it winner or win or won? Won, Pilk said. Because I won it from the ape. Yes, that's right, Fiona cried. That symbol can stand for one, the first fruit, your fruit. And didn't you say something about two for... Pilk felt as if he was finally starting to make some progress. Yeah, I did talk two for into not bashing me if I went and got him some fruit too. There you go, Fiona announced happily. You've got a name for the dog bone symbol now. Just call it two, for two for's fruit. Simple as that. Huh? Pilk said, a little confused. What symbols? God's in the stars. I knew I was going to have to do this, Fiona said. Let's do this slowly. That thumbprint, all on its own, you can call that one. And a dog bone shape can be two, because you've got to get two for two. Oh, I see. Pilk said, the picture finally starting to become clear. And maybe Evie's symbol could look like this, he said, a little more excited. And he took the twig from Fianna and he joined three thumbprints together to make a triangle. Although, of course, he didn't know what a triangle was. This is long before maths lessons. How's that then, he said happily, showing his new symbol to Fianna. By the stars, I think you've finally got it. Fianna said, I think there's hope for you yet. And you can call that symbol free, because Evie set you free. Oh, and I've got another idea, Pilk said. And he turned the leaf over and quickly pressed four red marks on it with his thumb and joined them together with lines in a square. He held it up so Fianna could see it and said, I think I'm going to call this symbol four for my new friend Ford, because, well, I think I taught him Friendship is worth fighting for. Well done, Fiona said. I'm proud of you. And pleased if I've got anything to do with you learning something new. He had learned something new from Fiona, he had to admit. And he felt as if he had just moved into a new era of something that he couldn't quite grasp. Well, I'm pleased if I've been a good student for you, Pilk said. Maybe someday somebody will tell a story about this. Yeah, well, don't get too big-headed about it, Fiona said, slightly scornfully. 
you didn't exactly come up with it all by yourself. Pilk sat silently, thinking about that for a second. And then he said, Do you know what, Fianna? I'm going to tell you something that someone once told me not too long ago. And what's that? Fianna said, with an expression that clearly showed she wasn't expecting too much. And in a voice, almost exactly like Toofer's, Pilk said, You has too much brains for one person. Fiona looked at him solemnly, and then her face broke into a smile, and they both burst out laughing, enjoying the joke and what they had learned from each other. (laughs) 